A warm welcome to everyone and welcome back to day two of the 2016 Pokemon National Championships here in Singapore. My name is Shang Lo and joining me on stream for the first Top Cut match of the day is Justin Locke. Yes, uh, our co-commentator Matthew should be joining us shortly for the next few rounds. Um, well, our first round is between uh, Stefan Tan and Edward Chong. A showdown um, between Malaysia yeah. and Hong Kong right off the bat in this top eight. Yeah, um, so what do you know about these two players then? Well, both of them have made, definitely have made a name for themselves in their respective countries. Uh, Edward, obviously, probably the most feared uh, Cantonese player to date. Um, trying to repeat a top four performance from the 2015 National Championships, like once again in the top cut. Uh, really unfortunate last year where he was knocked out of the top four to a series of rock slide flinches. But he's going to have to hope for a much better luck this year. Mm -hmm. And I'll be interested to see if uh, any what, what type of archetypes they'll bring, whether it'll be Dual Primal or even the Rayo Girl, although I do expect more of a Zendon uh, team. Um, having discussed a bit of the metagame with Edward throughout the season, I, I know Edward is a huge fan of the Dual Primal core, and I do expect him to bring it today as well. I think I saw one of his matches against uh, Yangtze or yesterday in Swiss, and he, did, he was bringing that Dual Primal core. Uh, Stefan, I haven't seen his team yet. I do believe he is also running a dual primal core. So, um, dual primal mirror matches are always interesting because it's there's so much board control that's involved with the thunderous and the Cresselia usually. Indeed, and another thing is the constant switching of the weather will be will be very pivotal. Whether Kyogre will be able to fire off any attacks at all, yeah, and it could come from either side. I mean, if a player misplays and ends up bringing weather that he does not want, his opponent could benefit. Exactly. Um, yeah. And also, if both I believe both players are carrying that Cresselia, so skill swap plays are, are online, and all the Icy Wind, Thunder Wave, Trick Room plays will be on the table as well. Alright then, going into the team preview, we see Steven's team to have the Amungus, the Cresselia, the Groudon, Kyogre, Thunderous, and he's spotting the Mens instead of the Kangaskhan. Basically, you know, your dual primal team, that in its first iteration, I mean, it's seen a few evolutions since then, most people dropping their Amoongus for Kangaskhan, but uh, Stefan thinking the Amoongus is still really important. And on Edward's side, we also see the dual primal core with the double mega in Salamence, Kangaskhan, Bronzong, and Whimsicott as a supporting cast. Yeah, Edward having Kangaskhan as an additional mega option here, and he has the Whimsicott as well. Um, very good support options to lock down the Cresselia or Thunderous. I believe Whimsicott is faster, is able to taunt the Thunderous before he can get out the taunt as well. Whimsicott can also be hinting at a slight, maybe a tailwind option on his team as well. And Whimsicott could be key here as carrying a faster, one of the few Pokemon in the metagame to carry a faster taunt than Thunderous means that uh, Edward's Thunderous can be, uh, sorry, Steven's Thunderous can be shut down very early in the game. Yeah, and on top of that, Edward, Edward's team is the only team that has the fake out pressure. Uh, Stefan playing a bit more of a reactive uh, position here. So, all right, guys, you can see the leads here. Amoongus Cresselia very coming out. Very passive lead. Very passive lead from the start. And Kangaskhan and Whimsicott. So, three supporting Pokemon on the field at the same time from the beginning. Yeah, but I would say Edward has a very, very good position here. The Whimsicott being grass type won't be redirected by the Rage Powder. It's free to taunt and lock down the Cresselia. Well, the Kangaskhan can just fake out the Amoongus. Cresselia, though, can be running that mental herb. That right is here. true. So, Edward. May want to use this game one to figure out uh, Steven's set, or he might want to go all out and try to take the game as well. Yes, um, Steven bringing the Amoongus is actually interesting because he definitely wants to avoid the sun in this raid. An unexpected play here from Edward, switching out the Kangaskhan into Bronzong as Safeguard comes out from the um, Whimsicott. And what a play! Spore comes out, blocked by the Safeguard as Trick Room goes up. But Bronzong can't be happier to see that. Yes, I mean, although Bronzong isn't um, very offensively inclined, it does benefit from the Trick Room being very slow, and Whimsicott shouldn't be hampered too much since it is have, does have the Prankster ability. And, you know, it's free to lock down the Cresselia and you know, see if it has the Mental Herb or not for future games. I mean, right now, Edward has opened a whole bunch of plays for himself. He's only brought one of his primals. But you have to think that it's most likely the Groudon, and switching in it, in it here and skill swapping Levitate onto it right off the bat can put Steven back really early in the game, especially as he set up his Trick Room for his opponent here. Yes, and I wonder if any switches will be made because it's a very passive um, setup right now. And yes, we do see Steven send in his Kyogre 
and this could be really bad as Edward switches out his his uh what was it called? Into the ground on here. Yes, uh, then the weather could be sun and Stefan will be forced to play from the back foot. However, Cresselia obviously does have the skill swap. skill swap ability as well. And Under Trick Room will be moving after the Bronze Song, so it will have the priority on the weather. Um, unless Edward chooses to bring in his own ground on here, turning out the sun. Um, definitely gonna have some skill swap plays going yeah, on. Yeah, we'll have turn. to see what both the support mons on each of the teams do here this turn. To see what kind of impact they'll make. I wouldn't be. I, would, I think it's a pretty fair shout to say that a double skill swap play is on the table right now, which means that we will be seeing. Oh, but actually goes for the gravity. Good play there, making sure that he can hit the levitating Cresselia with the gravity. Oh, oh. Cresselia reverses the <laughs> trick room. That is definitely not a play that Edward was expecting there. Yeah, I. I mean, maybe he. I'm. I'm still not sure about the speeds for both of these primals. So assuming maybe Edward has his own. Uh, Trick room set up. The ground could be slower than the Kyogre, and uh, Stefan tries to take advantage of this. Now he has the speed advantage, but the weather is not really in his favor. The thing is now, you know, usually on these kind of teams, Cresselia is slower than the Kyogre, so it, it's meant to outspeed Primals inside of Trick Room to get off the skill swap before the Primal gets off an attack. But in this case, by reversing the Trick Room, Cresselia kind of denies is denying itself that option. Of going for the skill swap before Kyogre moves for the attack. However, Steven could be playing a more interesting set on the Cresselia, which can prove us wrong. Yes, um, I, I'm not sure. Edward has shown all the Pokemon on his team as already with the Kangaskhan at the back, uh, fake out pressure, along with the Wimpy's Court. Stefan still has one more mod he has yet to reveal. It'll be interesting to see what Edward goes for here. Um, Bronzongs tend to be run two sets in this metagame right now. They have the skill swap, and some, but some of them opt to run the hypnosis over the skill swap, is to make use of the gravity that it sets up for itself. Uh -huh. So and we could see that come in play here. Yep, and the Cressella switches out for the men's getting a team date off onto the Groudon. Uh, could be big here. Kyra going for the protect here. Salmon's probably going to be eating a Precipice Blades, which won't be doing too much. Oh, but a protect from Groudon as well. Huh, okay. No damage coming out here. What does Bronzong go for? Bronzong <laughs> goes for the Trick Room! A, a pretty free setup. Um, Edward takes advantage of this very passive turn to you know, turn the speed tiers into his favor again. And very interesting to see that both players have only brought one of their primals, and they have brought the opposite primals to each other. Definitely. And, well, <laughs> interesting to know up to this point, no damage has been dealt by any of the teams. <laughs> very, that's the thing about dual primal mirror matches. The positional play of, of each team is so important that once a team starts to get pull ahead in terms of positional advantage, they're basically in a position to sweep the entire team. So up to that point, players tend to play a bit more passive. They try to set up the board exactly how they want it before they start doing exactly. Damage. And this is the first game. Both players tr basically trying to feel each other out. And we do yeah, see yeah, the yeah, hypnosis, yeah. but into yeah. Salamis' protect. Oh, as Grana goes with a sword oh, stance, stance. going to double his attack. The Intimidate by the Salamis is just completely to waste there. Oh, Kyogre goes for the Ice Beam, getting a bit of damage onto the Groudon. Yep, it is a bulky spread, that so is a, a bulky Groudon. I think that's not even a, a 3 hit KO with the Ice Beam. Yeah, but now Groudon sitting quite threateningly at a plus one. Uh, did not expect that Swords Dance at all, and Mens switches out. Switches out into the Cresselia here, trying to eat the Hypnosis onto something that's possibly not as important. As Kyogre is going to protect, try to burn another turn of trigger here. Hypnosis does come out again, going to land on that Cresselia. But yeah, I, 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 gravity is still up on the field, so I believe Hypnosis is 100% accurate. Nine, yeah. um, close to 100. Oh, but quite. Cresselia shows the Lumberry. That is useful information. And goes for the pressing place here, the Groudon at plus one. How much will it do to this Cresselia? Strange play by Steven, though, as now, um, by switching the Cresselia and burning the Lumberry there. Uh, he just go for the hypnosis once again on exactly. Cresselia, and I think Steve Edward is basically forced to do that because he can't afford to let Cresselia reverse the trick room once again. Yes, I mean he could hypnosis the Kyogre, which is arguably the more offensive threat. But as you mentioned, he does give Cresselia the option to reverse the speed tiers again, and Bronzong really in very control here. Since he's the slowest on the field, he will definitely go first. Has the pick. And Gravity has not yet run out, so uh, definitely one of these Pokemon will be put to sleep on Steven's team. Steven definitely needs to get the weather on his side though, as he does re recognize that. Switching his Kyogre out back into the Amoongus, Ooh. hopefully trying to get another uh, ab ability reset. And a Hypnosis lands on the Cresselia. 
game should give uh, Groudon another free Precision Blaze here. That pause on Precision Blaze shouldn't be enough to KO either of this Pokemon. As a oh. high damage roll this time on the Cresselia. My mistake. A low damage roll, called by a high damage roll. I don't does think pick that's. Up the I don't think that's what Edward wants. Now Steven can bring his Kyogre for free in, and, and, and has the, the Amoongus for the redirection, and is the slowest thing on the field not, as not well. Not just redirection. Yeah, Amoongus being very slow could go for the small, and we did see the same card run out earlier. So definitely now, Steven threatening to put um, Edward's Pokemon to sleep. Oh, did gravity run out? Gravity, I think there's still another turn of gravity left. Uh, it's the same thing as the safeguard just ran out. Okay, yeah. Must have missed that, but yeah, it will be it will be a battle between Amoongus and Bronzong who can actually move first. I mean, in this case, a pretty safe play if Amoongus can spore the Bronzong here to prevent him from getting hypnosis off. And since Kyogre has control of the weather, it's free to get off any attack here. However, Edward could switch out his Groudon, trying to sacrifice the Wounds Scott in the back to reset his weather control. That here. is true. He does have to sacrifice that plus one though, so... As a, I'm not sure if he wants to give up the advantage, but yes, the weather is not on his side. It, so. is a, it is a huge case of prioritizing what advantage you want to maintain. Whether you want to maintain the offensive pressure, oh, plus one Kyogre. Oh, but Stefan actually reads that and retreats his Kyogre. Sending in his Salamence once again. As Groudon goes for the Protect, Will Amoongus go for the Spore onto the Bronzong here? I think that is the play to make as yes. he goes for the Spore. Yeah, so Does Bronzong carry the Lumberry though is the big question. <laughs> that, is, that is true, we shall see. And no, no Lumberry on the Bronzong. And That's Edward is going to take a huge loss of momentum Ooh. as Trick Room expires as well. Yes, but this leaves Groudon pretty much free. Now he outspeeds the, the Amoongus, able to fire off an attack to KO it. And well, Edward didn't blink from that switch. Uh, I think Stefan felt that Edward would retreat the Groudon, so he had to withdraw his Kyogre. But Edward stayed in, so now Steph uh, Edward is in a position to deal a good amount of damage to Stefan's team. Solomon's coming in though does mean that he does get this free Hyper Voice off before Groudon gets to move. But the Precious Blades under Gravity, oh, Gravity oh, has brain. expired, yep. is going to hit that Amoongus and take it out. Um, Bronzong. Having Burn of Turn Sleep could wake up here and reset the Trick Room and Steven is crossing his fingers right now nope. and gets the extra turn of sleep. Yeah, but now crucially Steven is down to his last two Pokemon. Edward could just easily uh, switch in the Whimsicott to sacrifice it and force the weather into Sun. That is true. Um, this At this point in time, Steven probably has to aggressively target down this Bronzong. He yes. cannot afford to let Bronzong set up the Trick Room. However, he does that and when Bronzong goes down and Whimsicott gets him for free, Wuzakot could actually set up a Tailwind as well and re completely reverse the, the positions on the board. Yes, but a uh, very logical play here for Edward will be to withdraw the ground on um, to get the weather in his favor. And uh, yeah. Although Edward actually, now that you look at it, he does have the Kangaskhan at the back. Exactly. A very, we, are all, we all forgot that Kangaskhan <laughs> switched out on the very first turn of this battle. Waiting to preserve the mid to late game fake out pressure, which can be so important to ensure that his speed control of his choice, now that Cresselia is down, will be set up. Ooh, but Groudon actually stays in, goes for the. I think it's very greedy of him. He wants to keep that boost as long as possible. And Menz goes for the tailwind here, actually. Yeah. Really risky play here. Yes. Water Spout shouldn't be enough to KO this Bronzong, as Bronzong has a really high chance of waking up this turn. Bronzong um, hangs, hangs on, on Ben and wakes, wakes up, up and goes up for the trick room. room. Very that is big such a play. massive play, and that's what exactly what I said when Steven needed to aggressively target down that bronze on, needed to deny the trick from going yeah, up. Okay, and now but, he's gonna pay for it. Yeah, but we look at Edward's like, side, he's staring two full health Pokemon. Is there any way for him to bring down at least one this turn? He can hypnosis one of the Pokemon. Okay, I mean, okay, he can hypnosis one of the Pokemon uh, with a 60% accurate move. Um, at, the, at this point, I think Edward's hand is sort of forced. He can't afford to go for the gravity here, but oh, Steven just forfeits. Yeah, I mean, I'm not sure because. Gravity is not up, Hypnosis is not a very strong control option there. Um, I'm not sure why he forfeit instead of playing it through. He does have advantage in terms of both his more R full health. Maybe he feels that he can't take the Kangaskhan at the back? I mean, at that point, even if it's not worth, even if he felt that he can't play it out, it's still, I don't think it was any turn where both the Kang, the Kyogre, Kyogre didn't even attack the entire battle. So. It was oh, still worth trying to figure, spot. trying to figure out um, which 
Primal is faster on the Trick Room. Might have been worth staying around for another turn for. Um, but now he's going to game two, a game down, and without that extra information as well. So he's gonna have to bust out some amazing plays in game two to pull the series. Yeah, back. definitely. I'm, I'm not sure. Maybe he feels the Kangaskhan fake out pressure will be too much for him. Perhaps, yeah. but um, Edward definitely showing why he is one of the most feared players in the APAC circuit. There, such great manipulation of his speed control options. Yes. And, uh, that risk uh, risk assessment in terms of whether to keep his Groudon in or his Bronzong in. But I think now that we didn't see a Lump Barrier on Edward's Bronzong, so we can assume that it is holding a Mental Herb to that prevent the most likely, yes. Yeah, or it could be the Citrus Berry, but I and highly so doubt it. Yeah. So we most likely won't see the Thunderous coming out from the, the yes. Steve from Steven's side now yeah. that he knows that uh, Bronzong isn't holding the Lump Berry. Yeah, and maybe Edward actually wants, you know, sorry, maybe Stefan actually wants to consider bringing his own Groudon. I mean, it's a very good way to uh, threaten the Bronzong on uh, Edward's side of the team. Especially to maybe to deter the Bronzong from setting up uh, the gravity as well. Yes. Um, aside from that, I mean, Cresselia didn't really get to show off much as well. Most of the support came from the Among Us, which did contribute with the Spore. Um, we didn't really see Rage Powder in action there. But I think that last match just came down to Edward um, knowing when to press the attack. and. Uh, Really just outmaneuvering Stefan with his bronze arm. Yes. Usually in the in the dual primal mirror, Cresselia does have the advantage against the bronze arm, precisely because it can move after bronze arm in trick room and therefore get up the skill swap of his choice. Mm -hmm. um, however, definitely well, very well played set there by Edward. And if he can continue playing this way, he'll definitely have a very strong chance of moving on to another to a second consecutive top four definitely. finish in the Singapore Nationals. Stefan here leads with Cresselia, Kyogre, and. Edward brings in his own Kyogre and Bronzong. So, no Groudons as of yet. And we see Edward's Kyogre Primal reverting first here. Probably indicating that uh, possible speed ties, or if not, Edward has the speed has have a chance of a speed advantage for the rest of this game. And well, you talked about how Cresselia would beat Bronzong in a in a support match. Well we'll see if that comes to fruition here. Very interesting, it's really interesting position here. I mean, if it's gonna be huge here if one of these Kyogres have, has the Thunder oh, option. Oh, that is true, yes. Um, the, th the Thunder on Kyogre, while it gives up the option of running Skull, uh, this was called Water Spout set, um, gives you such a great advantage in the mirror match that some players have been opting to go for Thunder with Origin Pulse instead of what the more common Water Spout Skull set that we saw earlier in the season. Indeed, yeah. So. And also, I wonder if he has Ice Beam on the, his Kyogre for the men's on Stefan's side. Especially since Stefan doesn't have the dual mega option, you have to imagine that possibly the men's is at the back. But I can see Stefan not bringing the men's at all and actually just bringing the Amoongus and the Groudon in the back. Ooh, and we do see Water, water spot. spot coming right out. Priscilla going down into the yellow. <laughs> and Stefan returns with his own Water Spot, although it is reduced in power. So I think safe to assume that neither of these uh, Pokemon have uh, Thunder. You oh, might Cassandra see goes. a cheeky double yes, trick room yes. here. Edward also oh. goes to trick room and Stefan has just wasted his first turn. Yeah, and since Edward managed to fire the first attack, he does have an uh, advantage in terms of HP. His Water Spot should be able to take, get rid of the Cresselius and Bronzong should be able to survive. Maybe go for a Gravity or hypnos a chance of Hypnosis on Kyogre? I mean, there's I nothing point, point to lose. Not really any point in doing that, but I think gravity play a gravity Ooh. play here makes a lot of sense. Alright, Amunga switches in. As Kyogre is gonna go get off that water spot oh, once again. If Bronzong goes for the trick room here, it could be, could be quite bad since uh, I think there's no the reason field. for Bronzong to go for the trick room here, that as true, he yes. should be expecting two takedown to Cresselia. But oh, Bronzong well. goes for the trick room. Call me a liar. Amunga suddenly is so threatening on the field right now. That is true, but we did see the safeguard come out from Edward's side of the team. Was it from the Whimsicott or was it from the Bronzong? That was from the Whimsicott. Mm, Alright then, um, Among Us should be free to spawn either the Kyogre or the Bronzong here. So I would like to see Steven having brought the Groudon option here, but no, he's brought the Salamence. Uh, gonna drop that Intimidate. So, it's an interesting option here. Among Us is definitely faster and can spawn the Kyogre before it can Ice Beam the Salamence. But Salamence itself, has has zero offensive pressure on this Bronzong. Yeah, and with... Uh, I'm not sure how he can recover from this position. Edward still has two more Pokemon yet to reveal at the back. 
Uh, if he is the Kangas Khan at the back, it does have fake out pressure to you know chip Stephen's down, Stephen's team down even more. Once again, Edward just completely denies Stephen of his of his speed control options by eliminating Priscilla at first and you know doing enough to keep his Bronzong alive so that he can choose whether the Trick Room is up or not. Oh, but Amugus here goes for the small, puts the Kyogre to sleep. What does the Bronzong go for? Yeah. I think Bronzong is pretty free to go, to go for a Gyro Ball here, try to get some shift damage. Oh, goes for the Gravity. I believe he wants to go for Gravity Hypnosis as a control. I'm not sure he can get it off. Exactly, since uh, Bronzong is going to probably get put to sleep by this Amoongus the next yes. turn as well. And Mens fires off a Hyper Voice, shipping a bit of damage onto Edward's side. So little damage onto this Kyogre, you're not even dealing, dropping it into the yellow. Yes. I mean, at this point, Stefan has to get... Uh, has to get a KO somehow. He is at a severe disadvantage here. Yeah, so he, if he loses one, one more Pokemon here, Edward can just bring his Groudon from the back, change the weather into his favor, and win the game from there. Yes. Well, Among Us, there's still some hope for Stefan. I mean, the, the Trick Room being up here is huge, meaning that Stefan does get a few free turns here. But with Salamence on the field, how much damage is he really going to get off on this really bulky Kyogre yeah, and, 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 the, and the Bronzong as well? Yeah, Among Us might have to contribute to damage here, which is not something that <laughs> you expected, expect from it. But and we do see the double edge going to try to get as much damage on this Kyogre. Is it enough to pick up KO? Well, actually, gets the KO. Gets the KO. So Steven, obviously, uh, realizing he does need to get some damage on the board right now. Yeah, and a fresh one will come in from our side, but Trick Room is still up, so the Among Us still in very strong control over here. And um, if it is the, although if it is the Kangas Khan though, hmm. I think Kangas Khan will be a very reasonable switch in here to get a fake out. But the thing is, it, being Kangas Khan, it only has single target moves, can only target down either the Among Us or the Salamence, so he will be eating another turn of either free damage or getting his Kangas Khan scored mm -hmm. and wasting another turn of Trick Room. I'm not sure, I think Edward, actually now that he has ground at the back, he wants the trick room, but he has to find a way to get rid of the Among Us, because Among Us is just so annoying, just stopping his offensive, uh, uh, just stopping his offense short. Uh, Among Us putting in a, uh, definitely putting in a lot of work here, uh, usually Salamence is at a massive disadvantage under trick room, but with Among Us learning the, the spore here, uh, Salamence gets free turns after free turns, but once again that Bronzong is still so important. Ooh, oh, actually goes for the protect here. Huh, interesting choice. Will the he be punished by it? Among Us, great read! As Hypnosis comes out, oh, oh. he's gonna land on the Salamence. What a clutch awakening by Edward. Yeah, well, Mens at least does burn off that one turn of sleep, meaning he can wake up the next turn. Yeah, so Among Us now has to choose. Does he want to put the Bronze on the sleep or put the Kangas on the sleep? I think definitely from Steven's side of the field, you have to consider the Kangas on the bigger threat here. Yes. I mean, Yes, uh, Bronzong can get off the Gyro Ball onto Salamence, but that just means he gets a free switch back into his Kyogre. Um, I'm actually more concerned about Among Us going down for Stefan. That means yeah, Edward that would be able to control the side of the field with, uh, with sleep effects of his own from the Gravity Hypnosis. Bronzong. And Among Us is going to go off into Kangaskhan. So, what do you think a good play here for Edward? Let's actually go for the Hypnosis onto Among Us. A Yes. As that's exactly what he goes for here. Recognizing that Salamence is really not a big threat on the field right now, um, as long as he can keep Bronzong alive and healthy and putting that Amoongi to sleep. Yeah, and it's all a matter of who is. Oh, Mens gets a one turn sleep, goes for the Hyper Voice here. Uh, does chip down the Kangaskhan, I believe, into double ish KO range here. As Trick Room crucially expires, and now suddenly Bronzong doesn't look so safe <laughs> anymore. Yes. Uh, I'm not sure that the Mens wants to invest. It's a tag to take it down this turn, so... Actually, does he want to? I think he does want to take down the Kangaskhan this turn, as... I mean, I mean that's 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 what you think, but... Bronzong getting Trick Room up again for potentially the a Trick Room. he does have the, 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 the Kyogre in the back, as uh, he does... Yeah, Steven I mean, he, he doesn't want to... He, I think he Bronzong just around. doesn't want Trick Room up on the field anymore. Uh, recognizing that maybe Edward has the Groudon at the back and doesn't want it to go first. Kang's not going to take another turn of sleep here as Amoongus also takes a turn of sleep. So yep. Gravity reverted back to normal and Edward is down to his last two, which is his Groudon. And well, Stefan, having the Kyogre the back means the weather will be rain. And I mean, he a can bit just less uh, worrisome on Edward's side as, as his Groudon is uh, the physical variant. 
So if Kenzion can get a wake up here, um, it could. He could still stay in the game. However, if Steven just goes straight for the double edge onto the Kenzion and gets a knockout, then I'm pretty sure it's safe to say it's game over. Yes. And at the same time, I mean, Steven, a very passive play will protect his men and sacrifice the Among Us. But you have to remember that Edwards. Groudon has that Swords Dance option. That is true, which, yes. Which, after getting a Swords Dance up, uh, can start threatening this, yeah. this Kyogre and, with a 1-8 And Kangas Khan actually also being very trending with the Sucker Punch. I believe, uh, I'm not sure how much health uh, Stefan's Kyogre is at now, but if he wants to make use of that Water Spout, then he should get rid of the Kangas as fast as possible. And Amogus wakes up, goes for the Protect. Alright, men should be going for the attack here, I believe, on the Kangas Khan. Oh, oh actually, Hyper Voice, not try, trying to risk a... a one more sleep, one turn of sleep, but he does get it. Hmm. Getting bailed out there by sleep turns as Fire Punch goes into the protect. I, I don't know, I don't really agree with that play. I mean, it would be much safer to just go for the Abolish on the Kangaskhan. Steven did get bailed out there, but it does look like he will be taking game one here, a uh, game two here, as uh, another Hyper Voice Rage Powder play will, as Edward forfeits, and will bring this. Steven forces game three. Yeah, um. Edward's taking an early lead in game two, but not able to close out the game because of Amungus just slowing down the game so much with his spores. I, I, yes, uh, I just have to say that the trick room from Edward just backfired on him. Just gave Stefan uh, Amungus time to slow down and, and recover and start picking up KOs of his own, which was really needed. It really reminds me a bit of the 2013 uh, World Championship Finals where Arash Omadi used his Amungus to great effect to make use of Yosuke Kosuke's own trick room against him. Yes. And um, we saw how deadly Amungus can be, even without setting up trick room yourself. If you can bait your opponent well enough, it's setting it for you. So now, Edward has a very strong dilemma. On one hand, his primals, are, I believe, are set to abuse trick room, but the Amungus on that side is something that he can't really fight against. Unless, well, he does have the Wimps caught with the safeguard. I think. Definitely uh, on Edward's side, he might be considering bringing the Wimps God back in, or maybe his own Salamence as well to, to exert pressure on uh, Steven's Whims and Cut. Uh, Amungus, you mean? Uh, yeah, that Amungus. is true. I mean, we did see Groudon have the Fire Punch, although it does have to wash out for Rain. Men's um, Flying Step Double A should be able to take out the Amungus and put an end to his problems. However, Steven has shown to bring his Amungus from the back, so. Uh, if Edward carelessly leads his Salamence into the maybe pos possibly a Crescent like Kyogre lead, uh, it could it could turn could be a great loss of momentum from the get go. Mm -hmm. And well, maybe Edward also wants to consider bringing his Kangaskhan early. Um, having Kangaskhan at the back, I don't think is a very good decision. Going Salamence Thunderous coming out. Ooh. Finally showing the Thunderous in game three right. as Kangaskhan Kyogre. Ooh, I was gonna say it'd be very bad for uh, Stefan if Whimsicott showed his face. Yeah, but nope, Kangaskhan and Kyogre. Kangaskhan does have that fake out pressure for But turn does one. eat that intimidate from the Salamence as well. One of the reasons why Edward possibly did not want to lead with his Kangaskhan in game two. But uh, that early fake out pressure is so important. A fake out water spout here will be dealing a lot of damage. And Salamence cannot carelessly double edge into Kyogre as well for fear of the ice beam. Yes. Although, Edward does have to be wary of that Thunderous. Without his own Whimsicott to stop any support moves coming out from the Thunderous, uh, the Thunder Wave could be going into his Kyogre, which would totally take away his speed advantage. An interesting play Edward can make is actually to switch out his Kangaskhan into Groudon and go for the Ice Beam onto Salamence, trying to predict, um, you know, a Thunder Wave into the Kangaskhan slot. Yeah, or I mean, Thunderous nowadays tend to carry the Focus Sash, might want to protect to preserve that Sash, so, yeah, in a sense that could be a way for Edward to punish. Because Groudon definitely has a very good time against opposing uh, Thunderous. As Kyogre switches, is the one to switch out instead, Edward wanting to keep that Fake Out pressure alive. That uh, should be the Bronzong. Oh, interesting. Good switch in here though. I mean, in front of the Salamence and the Thunderous, and we are assuming that the Bronzong does have that Mental Herb, um, a free trick could be going up. Yeah, but at the same time, the Kangaskhan not really going to accomplish much here, I feel. I mean, do we see any protects come out from Stefan? Oh, Thunder is going straight for the taunt. Oh, the oh! Bronzong, what a massive play there! 
gonna burn the mental herb, but meaning that Thunders can go for a second taunt in the following turn as Hyper Voice gonna chip this Kangaskhan. That was a very, very bold play, a very bold prediction by Stefan there. But what a read there as Double Edge at a minus one, not gonna be enough to take out this Thunderous as oh. it eats up on his Citrus Berry. I take that back. <laughs> Bulky Thunderous on Stefan's side. <laughs> and now Bronzong. And taking so much recoil as well from that Double Edge. Yes, and Stefan now in the driver's seat. Uh, Bronzong being vulnerable to the taunt, having burned his mental herb. Um, Mans. Not intimidated, can easily free to, fire. Free to hi fire off Hyper Voice after Hyper Voice here. And uh, Kanga's got running that double edge over frustration. Gonna put us off on a timer here, choosing what it really wants to attack. If it chooses to take down this Thunderous this turn, he's gonna be trading it off his Kanga's gun for sure. Yeah, and I mean, that's not even a very good play because the Thunderous can even get off the taunt before it goes down. I think Edward definitely has to maneuver his Bronzong out. And b before he can safely get it back in, once Thunderous is off the field. Yes. I mean, he has to get rid of the Thunderous somehow. I, I assume maybe his last one would be the Groudon? Yeah, it should most likely be his Groudon. So... So we do see the Kangaskhan switch out instead, trying to reset that Intimidate as Groudon comes in. If the Bronze doesn't switch out, I'm really curious to see what Edward actually went for with the Bronze on the turn. Dryer Ball isn't going to be doing too much damage, and that, you have to think that Steven is going for the taunt here. I mean, double switch from Edward. That is a, that is definitely a play he had to make, trying to maneuver his Bronze on out of the taunt. I mean, I mean maybe he felt the Thunderous would go for the Thunder Wave on the Kangaskhan, predicting a switch. And Thunderous does go for the taunt here. Onto the Kyogre, the safe play from Steven. Cannot afford to let the Trick Room go up, as Masalamis here is just getting free damage turn after turn. Yeah, but, um, well... Thunderous does have a... is free to fight off Thunder Wave on the Kyogre here, though. And Stefan in very strong control, not having to switch out any of his Pokémon at all. Edward kind of playing himself in an awkward position here as uh, Kyogre switching out this time, going into his I believe Bronzong, Kansas, maybe trying to pick take a Thunder Wave. If you're predicting a Thunder Wave in the slot, you would switch out into a Thunder is smartly protecting here, trying to bait out the Fire Punch from the Groudon and get off another turn of free damage with this uh, Salamence. Yes, uh, as Fire Punch goes into the Thunder's Protect, fantastic play. Uh, and maneuvering Seven, by Steven. Seven is just slowly chipping away at our Steven. I believe Groudon is not long for this world. Another maybe one or two more Hyper Voices should be enough to take it out. Once again, he can go straight for the play. We're taunting the Bronzong and Hyper Voicing. We'll pick up the KO on the Groudon as well as ensuring that Trick Room does not go up. Yeah, so Edward kind of digging himself deeper into this hole. Um, maybe Groudon, maybe Kyogre staying in and getting a kill with on the men's wave, an ice beam would have been the play to make to break this uh, this position that he is in. Well, Thunderous definitely being a very key player here with that very bold prediction, burning off Bronzong's safety net. That was definitely the play of the game so far. Play of the game. <laughs> As now, Thunderous is just basically pinning down everything that Edward can do to try to get up his B control. Um, we mentioned in the, earlier that you know Thunderous may not be as good because of the of the of the, the Bronzong, Wh the Whimsicott, Whimsicott and yes. the Whimsicott as well. But uh, Stevan has really set up the game so that Thunderous can really shine in Game Three here. Yeah. As Hyper Voice is gonna get off another turn of free damage, bit of the Bronzong, putting it into the yellow. As the Trick Room isn't gonna be set up there. Yeah, um, and we'll try to make a very bold prediction on his own, but it's punished by the taunt on Stevan's part. And Stevan really has no reason to go for very bold predictions now. Um, it's really very safe for him, for him to go for uh, obvious plays here. Just pressing Hyper Voice to get chip damage off is fine for him. And this turn, well. he's freed Hyper Voice and Thunderbolt into the into the taunted Bronzong slot. Kyogre cannot switch in. Kangaskhan cannot switch in. Edward is just pinned down by this thunderous Salamence lead, and he he's running a risk of getting 4 0 right now. He, yes, and once again, Stefan has not shown his last two Pokemon. So very. Difficult position for Edward. The double protect they're not paying off for Edward, as you're definitely gonna see a thunderbolt going off. I'm not sure if it's enough to take down this Bronzong, seeing as uh, this is a bulkier thunderous. 
but I, I don't Bronzong think he wants to take down the Bronzong. As Bronzong gets a free Gyro Ball. I don't think he wants the Bronzong to go down. Bronzong is absolutely useless here. With, and he can he's just free to focus down on whatever uh, partner Bronzong, whatever partner comes in, which is the Kangaskhan. I was thinking that maybe Salamence uh, might not want me taking that Gyro Ball damage from the from the Bronzong, but looking at that damage, yeah. <laughs> completely right, Justin. Bronzong is absolutely <laughs> useless in this game right now. Yeah, and Edward can't really even safely switch it out. I mean, it's just more damage that Hyper Voice will do. So, definitely MVP here going to Thunderous, despite all the counters being thrown at it. The Whimsicott Safeguard, uh, uh, a Whimsicott being a faster taunt even, uh, the Metal Herb on Bronzong, despite all these odds, Thunderous still proves its worth. Thunderous proves its worth. Again, we have to stress, because of that, uh, the hardest of reads into the, the Bronzong switch in, thunder, taunting the slot as it switched in. Well, I don't think it's a very bad turn now for Edwin though. Uh, brings in the Kyogre, and Thunderous does switch out for the Amogus here. And if he fakes out the Mans, no, he actually switched out the Amogus, so Stefan's still free to fire off more Hyper Voice damage. Another free turn Hyper Voice here should be enough, if not putting Kangaskhan into the red, but it does enough, T takes out the Kangaskhan, and Edward is probably facing it. Edward has ex did I see him extend a handsh handshake there. Yes, um, down with a Bronzong at that kind of health. Not long for the world. He can't contribute to his position here. And I mean, Water Spot won't be able to take out the Mans. And Amogus can just safely redirect any Ice Beams as well. Exactly. Um, I mean, at this point, you, don't even, you probably don't even Think about targeting down the Bronze Army. Bronze steps to the Trick Room, go ahead. He has the Amoongus on the field. Exactly. So a, a play, possible play here is to just really just double edge into the into the cargo slot, but he chooses to go for the Hyper Voice instead, which is Yeah. Fair. At this point, it doesn't matter. Edward is just down to a lone Kyogre, staring Stefan's full team. Yeah, Kyogre against the world here, probably not going to end well for Edward, as Stefan winning game three without even using any of his primals. Yeah, definitely. I mean, the control from, uh, I mean, superb control from Thunderous there. That, that just has to be said. That Double edge goes into the Kyogre, dropping it all the way down. Kyogre faints, and Stefan Tan moves into your top four. Edward not able to repeat his top four performance from his 2015 Nationals. However, Edward will be attending the World Championship as well, so we will be seeing more of him later in the season for sure. Uh -huh. Stefan looking so relieved there. What a close set. After the first game, Edward looks so in control. But Stefan showed why he is one of Malaysia's top players. Definitely. I mean, if you just look at the teams alone, Edward has the advantage in the faster taunt from the Wizard. He has the mental hurt on the bronzer. He even has the option of a fake out pressure. So that puts Stefan on a very reactive position, which is not something you want to be in. But despite that, you know, you can overcome all that if you are very good at reading your opponent. <laughs> exactly. And I think um, Stefan being the player that he is, probably by game three, caught on to Edward's switching habits a bit, realized that. The switch into Bronzong there was the most likely and therefore made the appropriate yeah, prediction. Yeah, a very punishing predict there. And well, recognizing that you might, in a dual primer matchup, if your opponent is going to play the positional game, then you might as well just get as much free damage as possible and put your, your opponent in a position where switching is not a viable option anymore. Clearly in games 1 and 2, the Cresselia game plan wasn't working out yes. for uh, for Stefan, and after clutching through game two narrowly, he realized that maybe the thunderous mode was more effective, and it definitely was. Yeah, game two maybe a bit of a misplay on Edward's part. The trick room definitely not working in his favor. Just giving Stefan's Among Us time to shine, putting all of his Pokemon to sleep, even. Yeah, and I believe we'll be going on to an interview with the winner, uh, Stefan Tan. Yes. So yeah. we'll be back shortly. Please stay tuned. Welcome back, and joining me on stream now is your top eight winner moving into the semifinals, Steven Tan. Congratulations! Thank you so much, Shane. Um, so, talk me through, the, bring me through those games. Oh wow! Uh, for, the, for the first game, I was like trying to gouge how he played. I so I led very defensively with uh, a Amugus and Crystal, yeah. yeah, because I felt that I needed the ball going in, and I needed to see how he played. Uh, so. Um, Game one there was pretty down the wire as well because it depended on the the, the Bronzong surviving that uh, water spout. Yes, indeed. Yeah. Um, but then game two, it looked as if 
at the beginning you were kind of falling behind because yeah. Cresselia wasn't getting anything off, yeah. but somehow you still managed to clutch it out with well, the, without Amoongus. Well, we uh, I had a game plan going in, but it was that uh, either Cresselia goes down or I get Amoongus in. So the trade off for me was pretty worth it because I could uh, because I knew that. Uh, he needed gravity to get the 100% uh, hit on him out, yes. so I took a gamble, support something, and then... Amoongus coming in really clutch as yeah. in Game 2, but then the MVP of Game 3, of course, was the Thunderous. Oh. Um, didn't bring in Games 1 and 2, but what made you suddenly switch it up in Game 3? Uh, I decided because uh, I realized that he had trouble uh, in Trick Room because I had an Amoongus, so... Uh, Cresselia wasn't really doing anything for me the last few games, so I thought uh, Thunderous would be better. Uh, I started with my comfortable Thunder Solomon's lead and just to see what see what needs and it, and the Kyogre's reach out there was pretty obvious. Right, of course. I mean, maybe obvious to you, but to many of us here, that was a fantastic play. Because because I noticed in the previous two games, he tends to switch uh, defensively. And in, the, in game three, I thought um, that the game was in his favor, and he had to play safe, and I just went all in. And that what that's what makes you the player you are. You know, that was the play you had to make. You made it because if the bronze on had kept this mental herb, yeah. it wouldn't have been you know happy days for you. But ended up working out in your favor. Yeah, for sure. Um, interestingly to note, uh, you seem to rely mostly on your Kyogre in the matchup. Um, I mean. Is that how you usually play? I mean, I know some people do play the matchup yeah. with a single primal. Mm -hmm. Is that something that you're f more familiar practicing with, or is there like? Um, I would. Uh, I'm pretty comfortable with Kyogre, but um, I, for my Growler, I'm. I'm uh, I have some. Uh, I'm, I don't want to miss the precipice. Uh, there's some things that I'm not really comfortable playing that ground on right now. Fair enough. I mean, obviously the water spell is a much more reliable yeah, option. Yeah, exactly. And uh, with your Cristal, you can obviously get up skill swaps and. <laughs> What, whatever. Uh, but okay, well, stay off your team a bit. You still have games to play, so let's not spoil All too right. much. Um, how, what's it going ahead? Have you got your day two? I think you believe you have your day two Worlds invite. I am not sure because I think it still depends on Australia nationals, but uh, we'll have to see it because uh, at school I might have something going uh, on. Of course, <laughs> yes, but best of luck going forward. Hopefully, right. you do get that paid invite and then we'll right. see how it goes from there. All right. uh, best of luck in the semifinals and hope to see you back on stream. Alright, thank you so much. Thank you, congratulations. <laughs>